time to view this video on the Perkrite Calc Tool for designing residential drip dispersal systems. If you're new to drip system design, these tools are going to save you a lot of time on the learning curve. And if you've been designing drip septic systems for years, well, the tools are just going to save you a lot of time on your designs. The designs and the calculations generated by these tools are backed by the engineering staff at American Manufacturing. So if you have any questions, please give us a call at 800-345-3132. All of our calc tools can be all downloaded from our website, AmericanOnSite.com. Right here on the home page, there's a link, Perkrite Design Guide Calc Tools. You'll notice we have different tabs for different states. We've gone through and we've developed these tools based on local regulations, local engineering practices, because um, everybody does things a little bit different. So we've made it a little bit easier for you. If you happen to be in a state that doesn't have a tab, Give us a call, we'd be happy to develop something for you. Or you can use the National Designer's Guide. Um, the one I'm going to pull up here is actually Delaware. I am using a Mac, so things are a little bit different. Um, important to note, you need to download the file to your computer before you work on it. So I'm going to go ahead and download the linked file. If you're working with a PC, you just want to right click and save as. So you want to put that file onto your computer. So we'll go ahead, once we have it on the computer, we'll go to the Delaware Calc Tool. We'll open it up. Notice we just have an Excel file. I'll move that out of the way. We'll go ahead and bump this up to about 150%. So in this Excel um, file, we have multiple worksheets across the bottom. So we have a cover sheet, which we're looking at. We have a designer's worksheet, where we're going to go through and answer all the questions. We have a loading rate chart. Um, that's based on our perk rate. It's going to tell us how many gallons per day per square foot of water we can put into the soil. Then we have the zone detail table. This detail table represents hundreds of different zone configurations. So based on lengths and widths, it's going to actually, if we click on things, which we will do later, it's going to actually generate your field drawing for you. And the last thing we have is a lift and distance table for sizing the pump. Before we get to that, there's a couple of things you always need when you're designing a septic system. So, click here. Things you're always going to need, no matter what kind of a system you're designing, you're going to need some type of a site plan. So you need to know what does the site look like, where's the house, what way is the contour running, and where's the drain field going to go. So we have a delineated site plan with, uh, with contour lines and with a drain field area. We're going to talk a little bit about the length across contour. So that's this number right here, 105 feet following a long contour. We're also going to need some type of a site evaluation, a uh, soils report, a perk test, a pit bale test, whatever you call it in your area. We're going to need something to tell us how many gallons per day of water we can put into how many square feet of soil. So we're always going to need that. Come back here to the, web, or to the uh, spreadsheet. So we'll start out with our cover sheet. We can come in, we'll load in a couple of things, the job name, G, it's the Smith property. It's owned by no less Mr. Smith. The designer just happens to be Robert B. Mayer. The site address and a place for a signature. We can come through and let people know we are providing a site plan. Um, we have selected one of those zone details, which we typically are always going to do. Anything in red is automatically filled in, so it's the basic overview of what the system is. Um, once we've designed the system, we'll come back here to these couple of documents. These are your standard boilerplate details, um, your construction notes, standard CAD details. So those are all provided to you. So if we jump into the worksheet, first question we're going to ask is, are the supply and return lines one inch? Well, these are pre-engineered systems and the answer is always yes. There may be times when you need an inch and a quarter or an inch and a half pipe. It just means you need to give one of our engineers a call, talk to them a little bit, they'll help you do some engineering. Second question is, is the lift to the hydraulic unit less than eight feet and the run to the hydraulic unit less than 30 feet with inch and a half pipe? And again, the answer is always yes. We want to keep that hydraulic unit as close to the pump as possible. We want lots of pressure for backwashing the filters. Depending on your site, your local regulations, 
we'll be working with either septic or secondary treated wastewater. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and work with secondary treated. So we're gonna clean that water up a little bit more before we put it into the soil. Our soil scientist told us that we have a perk rate on this site based on that soils report of, yeah, we'll, we'll challenge a little bit. We'll call it 60 minutes per inch. So kind of slow soil. Next thing we have is a demand analysis. So how many gallons per day? Here in Delaware, we do 120 gallons per day per bedroom. So we'll go with 360 gallons per day. Our contour run length, we're gonna change that to 100 feet. So from one side of our drain field to the other, following a long contour, we have 100 feet. Next is our length of the supply line between the hydraulic unit and the farthest zone. So what's the furthest we have to pump? Now well, let's stress it a little bit. Let's call it 250 feet away. We're relatively flat, so our lift is the vertical lift from the off-level float in the pump chamber to the highest zone. So how far do we have to go and how high up? Well, we're kind of flat, so we'll only call it 10 feet. Now, this is standard things you're gonna do for any kind of system. What's the perk rate? How much water you're trying to get rid of? How far do you have to pump and how high? When we get to item number seven here, we're looking for the area loading rate required to treat and disperse the wastewater. This line is to be input from the loading rate chart. So remember, we're at 60 minutes per inch. So loading rate chart. In Delaware, at 60 minutes per inch, we're looking at 0.154 gallons per day per square foot. Go ahead and input that into this cell. Click back to the design worksheet. It's automatically copied that over. And now the calc sheet has already done a bunch of math for us. So based on 0.154 gallons per day per square foot and 360 gallons per day of wastewater, we've calculated out that we need 2,337 square feet of area. Tubing's typically two feet on center, so we're gonna have 1,168 linear feet of tubing. For 100 feet across contour, that tells us we're gonna need 11.69 runs or 12 runs of tubing. So if we take this 1,168 linear thousand, yeah, 1,168 feet of tubing, and we divide it by the 100 feet across contour, takes us to about 12 runs. The next thing is the zone detail table. This is where we did some pre-engineering and we've already figured out all of your little fittings, your top feed manifolds, your air release valves. We've done all of that for you. So if we come over here to the zone detail table, bump that up again, you'll notice it's highlighted anything from 100 feet and longer. It's excluded anything shorter because we need at least 100 feet across contour and it's excluded anything less than 12 runs. So at 100 foot on contour and 12 runs, we have these three different zone details that we can work with. I always prefer a two zone system. It gives me redundancy. It allows me to dose and alternate. So I'll start with either a Z223 with 1200 feet of tubing or a Z232 with 1200 feet of tubing. The main difference we have here is whether the supply and return lines are both on the same side in one trench or they're on opposite sides in two trenches. So we'll select the 230 or 223. If we double click on this, it drives us back to American's website. This is your zone detail. So we have the option here. We can either save this as a JPEG file or an AutoCAD file. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in here. A little easier to see. You can see we're showing the supply lines for zone one and zone two, our top feed manifolds for each zone, our runs, our laterals, and our top feed returns, and our common return line. So we've done all of that for you. That's all been pre-engineered and designed uh, to work at 100 feet across contour. Go ahead and come back over to the worksheet. So I selected this 223. Sorry about that. I selected this zone 223. So we'll go ahead and plug this into here as Z223. That comes back over and it's just a placeholder. It just lets me know that that's what we selected. I have to come in and tell the spreadsheet now that we selected a two zone. 
system with two laterals per zone and three runs per lateral. So the next question we have is the maximum lift allowed. We're always trying to use the same standardized pump. It's a pre-engineered system, so the more common components we can have, the better. So we'll use the ASD15 lift and distance table. Remember we had selected a zone detail with two laterals and our longest supply length is 250 feet away. That's the number we had put in. So the most we can lift is 92 feet. So if we look at the, the axis here of two laterals and 250 feet, so we can go up 92 feet. Now that tells you a lot about the flexibility of a drip system. We're going to use the same pump to lift 20 feet that we could use to lift 92 feet. Come back to the design worksheet. Let's copy that over. And it's going through and it's checking a few things. It's telling us the linear feet that we provided is 1,200. There's going to be 600 feet per zone, which is a great number. And the important question here is, will the zone flush? The answer always needs to be yes. As part of all of our pre-engineered and engineered packages, we're always trying to design for two feet per second scouring velocity. We want to keep that tubing clean and we know that two feet per second works. So you need to double check and make sure this says yes. There could be something simple. Um, we'll just play with it. You know, say we inadvertently put in our lift at 105 feet. Well, oh, oops, sorry. Now the zone won't flush. Our maximum lift is 92. We're trying to go 105. That's too much. So maybe we need a little bigger pump. Maybe we need to increase our supply lines. But now it's an engineered system and we need to you know, chat with those engineers again. So we'll take that back to our original number. The zone flushes. We're happy. We'll go on ahead and calculate all of the operating parameters. So our peak gallons per day of 360 calcs out to an average or 60% of 216 gallons per day. Our dosing flow rate, based on 0.61 gallons per hour through the emitters, is 3.05 gallons a minute. Our flushing flow is 6.25. So you can see we've calculated out all the different flow characteristics of that zone detail that you selected off of the website. We've also calculated out the standard pump run and rest times. We've done a couple of different ways, um, either based on just four doses per day per zone, or based on minimum pipe volumes. We want to turn the drip system on, get it pressurized, and operate under that ideal pressurized condition for the appropriate period of time. Um, so we give you a couple of different options there for your run and rest times. So we filled out all of this information. We have a calc sheet that will flush. So now we can come back to the cover sheet. We can say yes, we've attached our site plan. Yes, we have our zone detail because we pulled that off the website. Now, if I were working on a PC, I would just click right here and we would automatically open up a PDF file on American's website. I'm on a Mac, so you have to deal with me. We'll click back over to American site. AmericanOnSite.com. So I actually have to come down here to the bottom. So we've put together a couple of different design submittals. So we have one here for aerobically treated wastewater. So we're showing a secondary treatment unit, the hydraulic unit, basic overview. We have our scope of the work, our general notes, installation instructions, very special instructions. This is all those standard details that you need to include with your design. We also have included in here hydraulic profiles, simple check boxes where you can check off what type of system you're providing, lots of standard details. All of these details are also available as um, AutoCAD files on American's website, so you can pull them off of there. Um, we'll actually jump back over to that website for one second. You can also download pump curve, oh, which actually works by just clicking on it. So we have a pump curve for that standard pump. The most limiting condition we're typically dealing with is flushing the filters, which is why we can have such a variety of uh, different flow rates and lifts and distances. So as I mentioned in the beginning of this whole tutorial, we have these calc tools designed for lots of different states. Each state has its own little twist. Once you've put together your calc tool and you're comfortable with it, you can go ahead and save it. 
can also hit this little button right here, submit the calc tool file. Go through, plug in your email address, your name, job name, phone number, choose your file and attach it. Hit this button and send it off to one of our engineers. If we go all the way back to the beginning of this video, I mentioned that the designs and the calculations generated by these tools are backed by our engineering staff. So send it over to us, we'll look at it, we'll make sure it looks okay, and in most cases we'll be able to provide you with a letter that says we've reviewed it and hydraulically the system has been designed properly. Um, so please take advantage of that. Um, if you have any questions at all, please get in touch with American Manufacturing either through the website, which is AmericanOnSite.com or at their uh, 800 number, which is 800-345-3132. And thank you for your time.